Let's recall that example that we gave of Miss Pill's recent honors math test scores. When we calculated the mean, we got a mean test score of approximately 53%. And we discussed how that one mark of 99% there was skewing the mean to make it higher. And that's a problem. As mentioned, that 99% is called an outlier. So what's another way we could come up with a meaningful number for the average? Well, we could calculate what's called the median. It's great for situations that have outliers, like the 99%, and is often a better representative of a typical value. Here's the definition. The median is the middle number when they're arranged in order. And here's what we mean. For those math tests, if we arrange them all in order, and that part's important, we'd get this. Then, we'd notice that the middle number, the one where there are just as many numbers in front as behind, is the 44%. It has two numbers in front and two numbers after. So the middle number is 44%. That means we would say that the median is 44%. And so, if someone asked us for the average, because of the outlier of 99% there, we could reasonably give them the median instead of the mean and we would say the median test score is 44%. Now what do you think? Is 44% a reasonable representation for the most typical test score here? You can pause the video for a moment if you want to think about it, and then we'll discuss it after. Well, given that four out of the five students failed the test, or almost all of them, the median of 44% is probably a fair reflection of the typical test score. And that's the advantage of the median. It deals better with the odd extreme number in your data set, those outliers. For example, what if you're wondering about the average height in your class and one of the students is 7 feet tall? No problem, the median wouldn't be affected by that extreme height. The disadvantage of using the median, however, is simply that it might take a bit longer to calculate because you first have to put everything in order. Mind you, which is longer, sorting them in order to find the median or having to add all of them up and divide by how many there are to find the mean? Hmm. Sometimes it might just depend on the question. Anyway, let's try another example on the next page. 